We've reached Mazal Gdi, Mazal Capricorn. We have two signs to go, Aquarius and Pisces. As I mentioned last week, when we spoke about Sagittarius, Sagittarius was the third one of the fire element. Capricorn is the third one of the earth element. We began with Taurus, the second sign. We went to Virgo, and we went to Capricorn. All three belong to the earth element, and what they have in common is that they're practical, they're frugal, they're conservative, down to earth, somewhat stubborn, serious, and of course, reliable. What is the difference between the three of them? Just perhaps a quick example, when it comes to the area of money. Since the earth element is more frugal and practical, what are the differences or what is the difference between these three? Remember that all of the elements, within an element, they all share certain common characteristics, but there are differences in the way they express themselves. Even though Capricorn is, the, is really the first one, we're talking about Capricorn tonight because in the zodiac, it is number 10. Cardinal, however, is the cardinal sign. And all the cardinal signs, whether it's Aries in fire, Libra in air, Cancer in water, and Capricorn in earth, the cardinal signs are the first signs. They are the initiators. In some ways, they are stronger than the other two. Initiators, they are the ones that begin with a certain idea. They are pretty strong, whether it's an air strength or water strength, regardless, but they are the cardinal signs. Whereas the fixed signs, which is the next one, or Taurus, is strong in other areas too, but they are more fixed. They're not initiators. They can take an idea of someone else and apply it. Then you have the mutable signs or the more adaptable signs. In this case, Virgo, they're more changeable, more flexible. So even though they may be of an earth element, which happens to be pretty firm, fixed, and not so easily uh, flexible. Nevertheless, Virgo of the three is a more flexible one. To take an example of how they express themselves differently, let's take the example of money. How do they spend money? What they do about money? How they look at money? Money is very, very important to every sign, but they look at it differently, they use it differently. Capricorn Remember, all three are somewhat frugal. That's the earth element. Capricorn is interested in making money because he very much needs to be secured. And so does Taurus. Security is very important to them. Capricorn will work hard not for money only. He obviously can have a very important cause he believes in. Nevertheless, Financial security is important. When it comes to spending, he will be thrifty, he will be frugal. Why will he be frugal? Not because he doesn't believe that he needs something. As we will see, Capricorn is very much a sign that can easily deny himself certain things. Capricorn simply believes if he needs something, he will buy it. If he really has a need for it. Nonetheless, even though he needs it, he will look for the best bargain. Why? Because he believes that one should try his best to be frugal and economical and not just give away the money. After all, he's interested in security and he therefore wants to get his best buy. He will look around, shop around, but he doesn't, does not mean that he will hold himself back from buying something. If he needs it, he will buy it. So remember, the, the, the idea here is need. If he needs it, it's important to him, he will buy it. Comes along the Taurus. Taurus very much wants comfort. He likes the beautiful things in life. Enjoys certain things that bring him pleasure, much more than Capricorn and Virgo. To a Taurus, therefore, a need is not just a need. If it brings him pleasure, he will buy it. But he will only buy it if he has the money. He will not buy it on credit. There are certain signs that will allow themselves anything that their eye desires, and they will put it on their credit card. 
not their earth signs. Their earth signs do not believe in buying something unless they can afford it. Whereas Capricorn may have a business need, for example, a Taurus will need it if it brings him pleasure. Then he will want to have it. But he will only want to have it and spend the money if he has the money. And even he will look around and not necessarily splurge and just pay any price. He will compare because he's an earth sign. He does not believe in just throwing away his money. Comes along a Virgo, who's the third earth element, and will not buy something that is wasteful. Why buy it if they can't use it? If it's wasteful, then it's, a, in other words, why waste the money? They're much more picky. The Virgo, remember, is more picky and more analytical. It takes everything apart. And they wouldn't want to waste their money, and they would be penny-pinching, remember, in case they can find it somewhere cheaper. They're frugal, too. But to them, it's not so much the pleasure the object can bring. It's not so much the need. Is it really necessary? They will analyze it, criticize it. And if it's not necessary, they will not buy it. A different way of looking at how to spend your money. Nonetheless, all three, of course, will be frugal. Some more than others. Some will, will perhaps negotiate more with the buyer, uh, with the seller. Right? Some will probably uh, uh, push something off until they really need it. Nonetheless, they're all economical. What happens when somebody is very frugal and you, co you combine it with additional characteristics, that frugality can lead to being a miser. Does everybody here know what the difference between a miser and a stingy person is? A miser is even for himself. Whereas a stingy, he may want to have something, but he will not give it to someone else. He's stingy for others. That's somewhat the difference between being a miser and being stingy. What, does, what produces a miser? You wonder, you know, is there a miser amongst the signs? There's no particular sign that is a miser. But if in a particular sign of the 12 signs you have certain characteristics, that could lead one to be a miser. One of the characteristics that is necessary to produce a miser is a person who doesn't need something for himself. Remember, I, I just mentioned briefly self-denial. He wants to deny it for himself. He doesn't think it's important. He doesn't care about it. If you have self-denial, plus you put that together with frugality, right? plus you add to that a certain attitude about certain things in life, very pessimistic attitude, a lack of interest or enjoyment. And you, of course, couple that perhaps with a certain culture or mentality, that could lead to that kind of a midah of being miser. All it takes is a little bit of this and a little bit of that, a, little, a few ingredients to produce it. What produces a stingy person? For a, stingy, for a person to become stingy, he needs to be frugal, but you have to extinguish in him any vestige of generosity. If a person is generous, he cannot be stingy. Right? So if you add a little bit of frugality, you take away generosity, and if he's born in Iran, you know, that can also <laughs> make him a little bit down. I'm just joking. The country of birth does not affect it, but certain cultures and certain mentality and a certain upbringing obviously can make a difference. Nonetheless, there are certain ingredients that produce this kind of an individual being stingy. And that could be in any sign. It all depends what is extinguished and what is intensified. So tonight, Rosat Hashem, we will be talking about Capricorn. And I know a lot of, I happen to know a lot about this sign. Oh Hashem, I'm familiar with all of them, but this sign, there are some signs that are more familiar than, than with others. So you may find some very interesting ideas that you may not have heard about in other signs. Not that this sign is unique, but there are certain unique points that uh, are introduced into this sign, and some of it I've put in discussing the overall uh, the sign of Capricorn. Others I've separated into the man and the woman. So they're all, the, they're all dispersed. So once you hear the various 
uh, descriptions, you will get a full picture of Capricorn. As I always do, I give a brief introduction, and you will find in the introduction various points that have to do, or may, ha or may have to do, with the sign. Either the sign has some of the strengths that we can learn from, or he has some weakness that he has to learn. Point number one. Don't judge a book by its cover, as the rabbis tell us in Perkei Avot, Al tistakel bakankan ela b'mashe yeshbo. Don't look at the outer surface of a jug, but look at what in, what's inside. Or there is another saying, appearances are misleading or deceiving. You don't want just you don't want to just focus on something from the outside, very superficially. There could be a lot more that you do not know that is being hidden. Why do I mention this here? Well, first of all, Capricorn is a sign that is very reserved. And don't think you can know him just by looking at him or by seeing how he behaves. There's a lot more to this individual. And don't judge him by his outside appearance because it's a very quiet and reserved appearance. Even if under the guillotine, never give up hope. As the rabbis tell us, even if a sharp sword is about to come down on one, even though you may be right now facing death, certain death, don't give up hope. Continuously pray to Akadosh Baruch Hu, and at the very last moment, something can happen, a miracle can happen. What does this have to do with? It has to do with being pessimist. As we will see later on, Capricorn is known to be a pessimist, where Sagittarius was an optimist. Capricorn can be very pessimistic. Don't give up hope. You never know. Things can turn around in a miraculous way. So even if the situation is terrible, even if things are not going the way you planned them to go, don't give up hope. Get yourself a rabbi and acquire a friend, or as the rabbi tells in Perkei Avot, very important point, that in life we all need direction, and we would very much benefit from having good company. The direction comes from a rabbi who hopefully is knowledgeable, who knows you personally, knows your strengths and your weaknesses, and hopefully can objectively guide you as to what you need to do or what you you should not do, advise you, or instruct you when it comes to halakha. One cannot make decisions on his own whenever it comes to certain areas of halakha. You need the guidance of those who are expert in a particular area. Just like you go to a doctor and consult with a doctor in the medical field. So a rabbi could be an advisor, could be a counselor, could be someone that could very much help us, whether it's in our marriage, in our personal lives, and even in our business affairs, in making the tough decisions in life. And a friend, perhaps, is even sometimes more important. A friend that you can share your feelings, your secrets, your worries. Rabbi tells acquire a friend. They don't say get yourself a friend. They say acquire, even if it takes a lot of money and effort to prove your friendship. Because how are you going to get a friend? If you are a friend, you need to be a friend to someone in order to hopefully be fortunate to acquire a friend. Rabbis therefore emphasize that this is a priority in life. As we mentioned earlier, loving your friend as yourself is an incredible, important mitzvah. Not because we need to show love and respect to every Jew, but simply to have this friend is an asset. It's a true asset. It's one of the most precious things in life. And it's a very rare commodity. Acquire a friend, make that a priority, make an effort to find yourself and it will not be easy to find someone that you can truly trust 100%, 100, not 99, 100%. That's very difficult. But if you have found someone like that, you're a very, very lucky man or woman. Look for it. It's important. Life is short and there's so much to be done. Ayom Katsar Melacha Merubah, this is also from Pirkei Avot, reminding us how one can easily be, become distracted in life. After all, life preoccupies us, takes up our time with whether it's paying bills, raising children, our work, making an, uh, an income, right? All of there are so many things that go on in life. But don't be distracted from your ultimate goal and mission as a Jew. There's so much to be done. 
That is a reference to the mitzvot. That is a reference to our relationship with the Kadosh Baruch Hu, with God. Don't forget about that. That is the ultimate goal, and that is part of your mission, to be a good servant, a good Jew. And life is short, so be careful on how you plan and organize your time. Don't waste your time. And the last point is always refuse with the left hand and embrace with the right hand. Also a very important uh, saying that is found in, in the Gemara. And that is true with children, that is true with one's spouse. There are times that we need to refuse and say no. There are times that we have to say no. It's perfectly acceptable, perfectly fine. But when you say no, when you refuse, do so with your left hand. The left hand is the weaker hand. Don't shove, don't push, don't be aggressive. Don't refuse in a very harsh, denigrating way. If you refuse, say, I'm sorry, but I cannot uh, go along with your idea, depending on who it is. And embrace with the right hand. When it comes to embracing, to showing affection, then use your right hand. And I would add, use both hands. But what the rabbis meant, your right hand, is the stronger hand. Be more vocal, in other words, more expressive, more convincing that you are affectionate. But there's another idea behind embracing with the right hand. If you did refuse with your left, if you had to refuse, don't forget to embrace within a few minutes, a little bit later with your right. In other words, there are times that we may yell. It happens, we're in a bad mood. There may, there may be times that we even criticize. There may be times that we refuse a child, a spouse. We're talking about children or a spouse. There may be a time that you have used your left hand to say no. Don't forget to immediately or soon after use your right hand too to embrace. Let the spouse or the child not only see your left hand, your nose. Let them see your yes. Let them see that you really care about them. You want to use both. You need to sometimes use your left hand, but don't forget, if you did use your left, then also make sure to use your right and do so with a lot of warmth and affection. As you will see, these points make a lot of sense uh, with Capricorn. As we go through the sign, hopefully you, you will see that what, what I mean by each one of the points, where it fits in. The points are important by themselves without regard to the sign, but I try to relate certain points to every sign so that we could learn something uh, from the sign or for the sign to learn himself from these points. So let's begin with the sign of tonight, Capricorn. Capricorn usually starts around December 22nd. It all depends at the hour of the day that you're born and runs to January 19th or January 20th. Actually, January 20th is the border between Capricorn and Aquarius. So you have to really know the exact hour you were born to determine if you're a Capricorn or you're the following sign Aquarius. And sometimes the sign changes in the middle of the day. That is why it's important to know your place of birth too. And this is, of course, could be quite significant to know which one where you fit in. But as you will see, once I describe the sign, if you know somebody like that, or you yourself happen to be a Capricorn, you will know how much you fit in. And I repeat it one more time, just because not every point matches the Capricorn that you know, remember that the rising sign, which is a sign of your hour, which has a lot to do with your outer personality, has a lot to do, affects greatly who you are, one's education, the genes, all of that contributes to the molding of the personality. Capricorn are very practical and prudent. They're careful, they're ambitious, they're disciplined, patient, reserved, but they can be pessimistic. How do we recognize the Capricorn? First of all, he's not a fire sign, so he does not call attention to himself. He quietly and calmly allows those who are pushy and the more aggressive ones to go ahead of him. You will notice that. They don't push themselves too hard. But you know what? Even though he allows others to get ahead of him, he will eventually get there before them. And the reason he's capable or he succeeds in getting to the top or to getting where he wants to is because he does so, does so through careful planning and steady and slow advancement. He's not going to rush into anything. He's not a fire sign. He's going to think about it a lot. He's going to be cautious. But what a Capricorn has more than most of the other signs is that he's the most ambitious one of all. 
he has tremendous ambition. He very determined to get to the top. Not because he wants the honor, the glory. He's not a fire sign, remember, that he needs the glory and the honor. But he wants to take charge. He's convinced he can do a good job. He wants to be the leader. He wants to be able to get an idea or something done in his way. And he does so through a lot of patience. They have tremendous amount of patience. He's shy, but quite stubborn. Actually, very, very stubborn. Him and Taurus can be very stubborn. In their actions, they are calm and deliberate with a certain seriousness surrounding their personality. And that is something that you will most of the time notice with most Capricorns, is that they tend to show a serious uh, per, uh, personality. In other words, their face appears very serious. They have stern discipline and are strong in the area of self-denial. They, they can go off without too much sleep. They sometimes uh, go without food. They're not as interested in the food and the sleep if that's going to take away from what they need to achieve that day. They won't pay attention to that. Even though they look harmless, they can be very, very tough. When they go after something, they will do so persistently and relentlessly, managing to digest insults, pressures, disappointments, and duty very calmly. There are very few signs that can handle all of this with calm. Insults, pressures, disappointments, they do, they do an excellent job with that. They have a certain weakness, however, when it comes to disappointments. Nevertheless, they can handle it very well. They don't take shortcuts because they prefer the security of the traveled road and will not deviate to the right or left. They want to be certain that they're going to get to wherever they're going. They have admiration for those who preceded them to the top and have great respect for authority and tradition. They don't break the law. Most of the time, Capricorns are very, very strong in their belief for tradition and for authority. Instead of fighting, they will appear to go along, but they don't really submit. They sometimes just give the appearance because they don't want to fight. They'll get wherever they want to somehow. And they will make, perhaps appear to go along with you, but no way. If they disagree with you, they don't submit. No way. Capricorn carefully avoids obstacles. Remember, he wants to be sure. So he will avoid obstacles. He rarely stumbles. Some examples of obstacles for a, in a Capricorn's eyes, jealousy, anger, waste, laziness, and uselessness are all obstacles to be avoided. He has none of these problems that others would maybe have. To him, those that I just mentioned are real obstacles in what he wants to achieve. The typical ones won't allow emotions to blind them of the facts. There are some signs that are so emotional, so sentimental, so sensitive, that they, you know, they can lo lose it. In other words, they can forget about the facts, about reality, and just be blinded by emotion, not a Capricorn. They usually mind their own business and don't stick their noses in other people's affairs. That's good to know, because some people have a problem with that. They don't. They don't stick their noses where, don't, where it doesn't belong. Neither do they gossip or give out unsolicited advice. Whereas the Sagittarius will give you his advice readily. Some other signs will also tell you what they think. Capricorn does not get involved unless he's asked to. He minds his own business. He's more reserved. He doesn't get as involved with other people's affairs. He copes well with duty and responsibility. Now, there are other signs who are also responsible. He's not the only one, but he copes well with it and can tolerate frustration. The temperate and sober nature gives him tremendous endurance and potential for survival. That's very much a necessity if things are going bad, uh, the business is not going well, or if you are on your own somewhere without, without too much money. They can survive, they have the endurance, but somehow, somehow with all that strength, the following point is very, very true of Capricorn. Even with all that strength, what makes them ill is pessimism, depression, and worry. And that is a very interesting part of not every Capricorn, but many of them. They can be very pessimistic. Even though they're very strong-willed and determined and persistent, 
stubborn. In other words, they will go after what they very much believe in. Somehow their confidence is not always, at every moment, strong. What does that have to do with? Isn't that a contradiction? Anytime a person is a perfectionist, anytime a person has a very clear view of what he wants, things happen that can shake up his confidence. I mean, we're only human. And when things shake up this strong-willed Capricorn, and he, th see things, he sees that things are not going his way, or that people do not appreciate, as we will see later, what he's doing, and, and he becomes pretty much a loner, in a sense, then he could become pessimistic or depressed. The things are not the way they should be. Here he has these ideas, these grand ideas. Here he's very strong-minded. He's so confident that he can get to the top. And he can get to the top. He's so cautious. And here the realities are, are, are basically not what he expected. Nevertheless, he's able to deal with it. Definitely able to deal with it, but in the meantime, he's eating himself up inside, and you can't even tell on the outside so much. The problem with Cap, one of the problems with Capricorn is that unless they have a very close friend, their feelings inside stay inside. Some people, whatever they feel, they'll tell you in the face. You immediately can tell if they're in a bad mood or in a good mood. That's good. In a, in a way, it's good, or in a way, it's bad. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to hear people's being upset or mad, you know and displaying it, in, right? Here, he's keeping everything inside and not sharing it unless it's somebody that he very, very much trusts. And because of that, that leads to certain pessimism and depression. Or he has worries. And worries, the rabbis tell us, what do you do about worry? If you have a worry, one of the best cures for worries is talk about it with someone else. So. They can be very, very strong, but all of a sudden, if things are not exactly the way they should be, they can become worried and depressed and pessimistic. Pessimistic because, not because they're uncertain, it's because they see things as they are. They see things as they are. And what they should do, of course, is continue with their determination. That's not easy. So what do they need? They need a partner to push them. They need a partner to encourage them. A good match for a Capricorn is one whose attitude is a little bit more calm you know, than him, even though Capricorn is calm, but a little bit more easy a little bit more easygoing than him, firm, and of course not easily depressed or moody as he is. In other words, he needs something a little bit different than him. One who will be an excellent companion, a good friend that he can trust so that he can talk to him. And which sign is that? Taurus. Taurus and Capricorn are very, very good friends. Actually, excellent friends. Capricorn gets along with Virgo too, because Virgo is an Earth element too. Capricorn can get along with Pisces. Capricorn can get along with Cancer. These are pretty much the signs that he likes, enjoys being with, that he can confide in, and that can somehow help him with those moods. He's not a moody person, but because of the pessimism in the way he sees things as they are, as he's confronting them, he needs someone who's a little bit different, but not too much different. One who will go along with, one he can trust. You see, a lot, of a lot of signs need a lot of things to be able to, to get along with someone. But every sign needs certain things that are more important than other things. The earth elements need trust and security and, of course, devotion. That's very important. And without that, they don't want to be friends with that person. Other signs, the air signs, care about somebody they can talk to. Somebody they can communicate with, somebody that is funny, somebody that they can that they can go uh, and play golf with, right? The fire sign, fire fire signs need somebody who's very exciting, somebody who's very demonstrative. You see, water signs need somebody who's bonding, who's nurturing, who's uh, caring, and shows empathy. 
all the signs have different needs. And all of these are beautiful, but depending on what your dominant element is, you may have a need for more of one particular characteristic than another. So when we match up people, whether it's friendship or marriage, hopefully, if it's the right one, he or she will have those characteristics. And it's not a checklist that you work on. You will feel it. That is what we call chemistry. When two people like each other, after a while, not love at first sight, but after a while, you know, people after a couple of months or years, they still have a liking for each other, an attraction. It's not just a physical attraction. It's deeper than that. It's on an, it's an emotional level, on a mental level. And if it's on all the levels, then that's a very, very good relationship. Not everybody has a very strong relationship on all levels. Depending, therefore, on your sign, depending on the, on the sign of your spouse or your friend, you can be close, or you can be very, very close. They can use more outdoor exercise. This is just some advice for them. And need to develop a more outgoing and positive personality. Capricorn does not leap into a business or a marriage unless he's prepared financially and emotionally. In other words, emotionally for the marriage, financially for the business. They are very security conscious and think a lot about old age with many of them living long lives. Many of them actually live very long lives. And uh, you, many of them, of course, unfortunately, because of their uh, caution, marry late. You will find quite a few Capricorns not getting married at 20, 25, 27, but much later in life. Because they want to be secured before they enter a marriage. That is not the Jewish way of thinking, even though that's Capricorn. Judaism teaches that you get married as soon as you find your basher, your soulmate, and look for her as soon as possible. Right? Obviously, if she has not arrived or he has not arrived, and you've done your best, then it's mina shamayim that he or she is not available, not prepared, learning somewhere. But sooner or later, if you pray to Hashem, and you behave yourself, you will find her or him. And I have to emphasize behave yourself because marriage involving the soulmate involves a precious gift from Yashamayim, a very precious gift, and you have to deserve it. It's not a right, it's a privilege. Like they say about driving, you have to earn it. And Hashem wants us to have the best one. He really wants to give us the best one. But if you're not ready for it, if you're going to ruin it, why should he give you? Why should you ruin someone else and destroy marriage? There are many reasons why, therefore, it can be delayed. You want to be somewhat prepared and matured, and mature for it. And only Hashem knows when we're ready. But we have to try our best. We can't sit at home and wait. We have to make our ishtadlut, make an effort to look for him or her. And if we do so, he will assist because he's a partner. When it comes to marriage, he's a direct partner. And he's the real shatchan. He's the real matchmaker that puts us together. We have to have real bitachon and real reliance on him. And as I said before, we really have to merit it. He's a safe person to trust and confide in. Actually, one of the safest person, the safest people, him and Taurus, are very, very good in confiding in. At work, they prove themselves very indispensable and useful, and many times they are asked to take over the reins. When a Capricorn leaves a job, for he's gone, he's gone on vacation, they will notice it, the boss will notice it. Oh, where's my Capricorn employee? I can tell he's not here. Things are not being managed the same. He, this guy is responsible. He will work overtime. He will come in early to work. Most signs don't do that. Capricorn is one of the very few signs that will actually come early to the job and leave late. He's not even asked to. That's the way he is. He's responsible. He takes his, his job seriously. There may be other signs, too, that will, will stay late. But if they're, only if they're asked, he will do so on his own. That's why many of them eventually take over the job. They're the leaders. Capricorn will submerge his ego in order to attain what his ego really wants. He's practical and honest and can be a real leader. He's stern and cautious and will build your tomorrow safely. Right? He's cautious. He wants to make sure things work out just right. And he will not jump into anything before he checks it out. In his dreams, he's very romantic. I point out in his dreams. 
Now, this is an important point. I usually don't discuss how romantic each sign is. Because romance is really not understood very, very well, what romance really means. What I mean over here with romance, I mean deep affection and display of, of those feelings that one has. It's two parts. There is the deep affection, the deep feelings you have for someone, and then there is the, the display, right? I'm not talking about passion, right? I'm talking about true affection in its pure sense. So a romantic individual can be romantic in his feelings and can be romantic in the way he displays his feelings. A Capricorn usually in his dreams is very romantic. In other words, in his desires, in his wants, in his needs. What happens is that when it comes to showing, especially in public, he's on the surface, he changes his nature with calm behavior. He doesn't want to show, especially in front of people, what he's really like, because he's very stern. He's reserved, he's practical and serious. And sometimes he comes across, because of that type of personality, he, some people label them snobbish and stuffy. In reality, they're just being reserved. Now here, I really did not speak about husband and wife so much. When I said in his dreams he's very romantic, is I'm talking much more about his needs. When he is with those who are very co he's very close to, he's obviously going to be a little bit different. But as a rule, in general, he is more the reserve type. And therefore, you will not see him in public demonstrating his feelings. On the contrary, what you will see is somebody who's calm, cautious, practical, serious, and he may not give that impression that he's so caring. He may give you the impression that he's not interested in you, but if you get to know him, you will discover that he has a heart as warm and friendly as a cozy wood fire on a winter night. Now that I borrowed from, from an author. That's not my expression, but I thought that it very much describes him, what he really is. If you get to know him, he can be very, very warm and friendly. They are described as late bloomers. This is also very true because in their youth, in their early years, they're very, very serious. And they only relax when they get older. Actually, a Capricorn, as I point out here, in his later years becomes more sentimental and physical than he was in his very early years. He relaxes more. He works so hard to get to the top all these years. Now, Baruch Hashem, he's gotten to the top. Time to relax and really spend more time on what was always important to him. Remember his dreams? It was always important to him. As they grow older, they actually, from all the signs, there are very, very few who are like Capricorn, who become more physical and more sentimental with their spouse when they get older. A lot of signs, when they get really old, they just write their spouse a nice card with some nice words. You know, that's their relationship, you know. They're not very involved anymore, not as physical or sentimental. It just it loses its effect. Not Capricorn. It's interesting. It's the exact opposite. They become young in their older years in the area of being sentimental and will spend more time sitting close to his wife. Now, why do you like sitting close to his wife? Because Capricorn is an earth sign. They don't care for going out as much. They don't need to go out. They can stay at home on the sofa and read a book, but they're going to read a book next to their spouse, not across the room. That's very important to some people. They don't want to be too far away, and that shows true sentimentality. Don't be deceived by his conservative manner. His inner nature is pleasant. It's just on the surface. He may have a self-made brick wall around him, but if he has confidence in you, he will open up to you. This is where Knelech HaChaver comes in. If he has a true friend, he will open up to him. He will be a real friend. He may appear to prefer to be alone, but not really. They pretend they can live without compliments and will ignore you when you openly admire him or make a joke to cover up his real need. They may occasionally joke or say something and it's just intended to cover up what they're really feeling, but they don't want to say it. Because deep down he wants to be seen as good as he really is. He doesn't want to be seen and known for his outer appearance, what's on the surface, the seriousness. He really wants to be known. 
deep down what he really is, but that is not always does not that does not always come to the surface. Even though he doesn't advertise himself as Leo does, he yearns to open up. You know, some signs like Leo's, they advertise themselves. You can hear them from a mile away. They're very uh, they can be very loud, they can be very vocal, very strong natured. You will hear a Leo, you will know that he's around. Capricorn yearns to open up to someone, but he will not advertise it. He's a tough guy, but with a gentle heart. No matter how many gray hairs and extra pounds or wrinkles you have with the years, I'm talking about to the women now, the one who he loves will always look the same to him. And that's very good to know, very special, because that's not always the case. For some people, if the wife has gotten too old, too many white hairs, too many pounds, they may look elsewhere. Really, they may look elsewhere or even bail out. Of course, depending on how devoted they are and how serious they are and how religious they are, how many children they have together, obviously, depending on the individual, if he's normal or not. But there, everybody has a Yetzirara. Yetzirara is an evil inclination. And depending on your weaknesses and depending on how you, good your spouse was to you or not, this may be an excuse for some people to drop off, you know, to you know, let go. Uh, a relationship that has been around for 30 years. Not a Capricorn. Capricorn hates divorce. This is one of the signs that hates it. But if he's upset, and really upset, he'll jump out quickly. I mean, he's not going to stick around if he's very upset. But usually because they've been so cautious, because they're so devoted, and hopefully if they marry the right person, they're going to be around for many years together. The one who he loves will always look the same no matter what, how she has changed. And that's very, very good to know. Okay, let's see some differences between the man and the, wo the man and the woman. A Capricorn man is shy but strong and tough. In other words, you don't you don't see the shyness so much, but he is uh, on the shy side. He's pragmatic and practical, organized and dependable. The earth elements in general are very organized and dependable, strongly devoted and responsible. And this is true to both, uh, actually all three, Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo. Strongly devoted and responsible. And marriage is very solid, rarely divorces. Marriage is important to them. One of the safest infidelity, in case you wanted to know, Capricorn is one of the safest ones. No problems whatsoever. They're capable of self-sacrifice too. Very few signs are capable of self-sacrifice. Capricorn is one of them. In public, he's nervous about display of affection, and he may need training in expressing affection. Again, most of this is in public, most of it. And, uh, you know, not everybody likes to show their feelings in public. Now, as it is in Judaism, we're very modest. Husband and wives do not display open affection in public. No matter how much you want to kiss or hug your wife, you don't want to do this in public. We live in a generation where this, we see more than just th than that in the street, right? We see terrible things in the street. We have to be careful. Am Israel is Am Tsanua is a very modest. These are things that should be left uh, for private for your private quarters, not for the public. So they have a problem with display, open display of affection. Will not give you flowery speeches, but he will protect you from all your fears. The fire signs are very flowery. The air signs can be very flattering. But an earth sign is usually not into flowery speeches. But he will protect you. May marry late, only after he's somewhat secured financially, after he has a career. His family and children are very important to him. Now, this is very interesting. You will not find a combination of the two in one sign. One who's very to devote, devoted to his job and career but very and extremely devoted to his family. Capricorn will not allow his work, as much as he's devoted to the job, to take away from his family. The family is very important to him. Don't insult his mother or allow family disputes to develop. He's very, family is important. A true father figure will always be sitting at the head of the table. That was his makpir and his kavod in, in, in the father image in the house. A tr looking for a good, now what is he looking for in a woman? A whole list. He's looking for a good mother, a housekeeper that dresses well, practical with the budget, and that appeals to his senses. <laughs> now, 
all of this sounds nice, right? I mean, it's good, it's important, but you know, some signs do not mind if the woman is not such a great housekeeper. They'll get a maid. Eh, even the way she dresses, as long as she looks okay. The budget, depending, you know, they, might, they, they may be very generous, may be very easy going. Capricorn, all of what I've, I've actually chosen the most important things to him. This is a true list of what a Capricorn is looking for. You ask a true Capricorn, all of this is very important to him. The last one that appeals to his senses, you know what that means? That she looks attractive. Now even though I put that last, it doesn't mean that that's the last one. But in some ways, it is not number one. You know why it's not number one? Because don't judge a book by its cover. She can be cute and nice and attractive, but if inside she's rotten, I don't think anybody would want it, and not a Capricorn. Capricorn, if he sees a woman who may not be as appealing, but she's beautiful on the inside, and she's practical with the budget, in other words, she's similar to him, this, this is what means most to him. But he definitely wants somebody that's good looking too, but that's not gonna be always number one. We'll demand respect and obedience, will insist on routine and discipline, will not spoil his child, and the kids will profit from his strictness. He's a strict sign. He's not like a Sagittarius, you know, easygoing. He's not going to be a pal. He's a father. Capricorn is a father. He's not a friend with his children as much. However, the last point is obviously very important. If you're his wife, you want to encourage him to spend more time with the kids. They're into their jobs. They love their family. They'll have pictures of every child on their desk, perhaps. Very devoted, but spend time with them. Take it easy. Fun. That they don't do on their own. They need to be encouraged to do that. Capricorn woman. Again, similarly, she's looking for a good father to her children. That's what's important to her. Her goals are security, authority, and respect. She's not a pushy or loud or lazy person. She's not a fire sign. She's not a water sign. So she doesn't have the laziness, the loudness, the pushiness. But she's earth. She's stubborn, very stubborn. But she's not a nag. Even though she's stubborn, she will not nag. She will not complain. Will encourage her husband to get to the top. If you married a Capricorn woman, you're very lucky in some ways. She may be the one that's behind your success. You know the famous saying, behind a successful man? There is a what woman? A what? There, there's a strong, good woman too? Well, you can replace that with a Capricorn woman. In other words, very easily, Capricorn women very, very much push their husbands to the top. They're very much behind. They, you know, I can tell you an incredible story well, briefly, how a woman, a Capricorn woman, I think she was a Capricorn woman, saved her husband from financial disaster because she saved his money without him even knowing about it. He was spending it, investing, and everything went down, and she put it away in mutual funds and trust accounts, and all secretly and quietly, taking a little bit, a little bit at a time, and not even telling him. And when it came, off to, when it came time to marry off their children, and he, and he was embarrassed to say that he has nothing and he cannot support anymore. His wife said, let me do the talking. Yes, we will support, we will give half, we will do this. How? What are you going to do? You're going to get a second job? Don't worry. And of course, after everybody left, she told him the secret of how she, all these years, did not allow him to control all the money. She controlled it and she did a great job. She was conservative. No junk bonds. No risky investments. I think I'm almost sure she was a Capricorn. That's a very typical Capricorn woman. Support her husband, push her husband, encourage her husband to get to the top. May give impression that her emotions are steady, but she can be she can be subject to moods and depression, especially if mistreated and unappreciated. Remember, they can suffer from depression. Does not accept teasing lightly. She cannot handle that. She's a serious person, and she will sense insincere compliments. Some signs, you can give them a compliment and they're very happy, they're thrilled. A Capricorn, if it's, insens if it's not sincere, they will sense it. Will be cuddly and affectionate if the finances are secured. In other words, she will be great when it comes to affection and being, in other words, being very devoted and uh, warm, 
as long as she is financially secure. If she's not financially secure, she will worry. And that worry takes away from the sentiments. It's not that the person loves you less because of that, but the rabbis tell us if there's no parnasa in the home, there can be an earthquake. Because the wife, the women many times have a very difficult time when there's no parnasa. Especially the women who are more security conscious, like Capricorn. Here she loves you and she still does deep down, but what you're going to notice is worry and disappointment and frustration. Her home is spotless and smooth running, maybe devoted to the poor or a leader of some charity group. It means a lot to them to help, to be on top, to lead the group. Aware of social etiquette, will insist on correctness and tradition. Strong sense of responsibility and duty. From her children, she will demand politeness and manners and will not pamper them. Some signs spoil their kids, are more flexible, give in to them. Capric Capricorn is strict. Is one of the strictest signs, actually. And they're not into spoiling, they're not into giving in so easily. Her conservatism may clash with the teenager's want of being more liberal. So when the kids grow up, Capricorn being a conservative sign, following tradition strictly, will have a hard time, may have a hard time with the teenager is a very liberal boy or girl. Will care for an ill parent with devotion, sometimes relinquishing the idea of marriage. This is one of the most important points of tonight. And I left it here with a woman, even though it applies to a man. Just spend a quick minute on what this means. There are very few signs, and Capricorn is one of them, that will actually show complete devotion to a parent, especially in their later age. If a parent is sick, they will not put him in an old age home. They're going to have him living in their home. They're going to take care of them, which means that they may actually relinquish the marriage. It doesn't mean that they relinquish the love for a husband and for their children, but this will take up prime time. They're going to be completely devoted no matter what happens. A parent is always going to be a parent. And unfortunately, not too many children are capable of doing that. They take their, their, their mother or their father and they put them in an old age home. And sometimes, you know what, sometimes that is a necessity because there's no, nobody can take care of the, of the parent. Everybody's working. There's no maids. If you have no choice, the parent is ill and needs medical help, that's a whole different story. But even then, you want to visit them often. You want to talk to them. You want to help them. You want to be around with them. Not every child is as devoted to his father and mother as that father and mother were devoted to him. Unfortunately, parents you know, see this in their later age. A child does not show that much love to a parent the way the parent shows the child. The child is a part of the parent. That's, and therefore, they can, they're always going to be loving to them. But for a child to show the same love, it takes some effort, some work. It means taking your time, obviously, and showing interest, the bare minimum interest in the one who raised you, who gave birth to you, who brought you into this world. And it's not easy. Not everybody has strong feelings to, for their parents. And when the parents are old, and they may not want the help from the children because they're very independent, nonetheless, they crave for attention. And they need your affection. And they need your warmth and time. Even though they say, don't come, I don't need the help. They still need it, they still want it. A Capricorn man and woman, if they're normal, obviously if they're normal, they will definitely make this a priority in their life. And that's a very good thing, a very good point. Very much to their credit. Advice for Capricorn children. They're very strong-willed, they, but they won't throw a temper tantrum because they're not, they don't have fire. They're quieter. If he really wants something, however, he will not easily give up. Remember, he's stubborn and persistent, and he will try time after time. Very mature for his age. When they're young, they're very mature. Less interested in childish pranks. Rather be at home than playing with children his age. And he, therefore, if you see these things, some of these things you, you'll just have to accept and realize that that's the way he is. Some things you may want to change. He may not mix well with other students or participate in class discussions, and teachers may not understand it, but that's the way he is. I give some advice here. Make him the president of the class. And then you will see that he will be less of an introvert. Because then he's taking a leading role. That's the way of getting around his, his being so introvert. 
School seldom is a problem. These are serious children. They, ter they take their studies seriously, but they may not learn quickly. They may not learn quickly, but they will be studious and they will concentrate. They actually have a very, very uh, strong concentration. They're responsible and can be trusted. Has few companions, but one good friend. This last point is also very important. There's a lot of, there are a lot of signs that have gangs of friends. Everybody's their friend. They're, these are not true friends. The Capricorn, Taurus signs, these signs, and to some extent some other signs too, will put an emphasis on quality versus quantity. They may have a few companions, a few companions that they keep in touch with, but there will usually be only one solid good friend. If they have that friend, you know, was it they have one, if they were lucky in finding that one friend, to them it's a priority. Knelecha Chaver, as we pointed out, Capricorn very much believes in Knelecha Chaver. He needs it. He wants to share his deeper inner feelings with someone. Even though he can be independent and be on his own just fine, what did we say before? Deep down, he wants to share what he has with someone everybody wants to have. A good friendship, a good solid relationship. Some people need it more, some people need it less. Capricorn may not give the impression that he needs it, but he very much needs it and wants it. And because he's persistent and he's strong-willed, he will actually have to go after this. Advice for Capricorn boss. He works long hours and he's very efficient. Excellent in delegating work to the right people. That is, a that, is a, that is a gift. First of all, to delegate, which means to give over and, and, and divide the workload. Otherwise, you're doing everything yourself. It's a gift. If you know how to do it right, to give it over to the right people. This one, Matin, this one is good for this, this one is good for that. That's excellent. His office is like his home. Because he spends so much time at his office, then he makes it like his home. He decorates it well. His family life is not neglected because of his business. Life, uh, family is very important. Has serious and, and formal, uh, formal manner which may appear intimidating. Insists on obedience and duty. He's stern but fair and seldom raises his voice to give orders. Will not flatter or give you extravagant praises. Right? He's... Uh, very practical, very serious, quiet, will be a sympathetic listener to your troubles. May be gruff, but will be charitable and won't let you down. If there's spare time, he won't waste it. Right? What did we say before? Life is short. There's so much work to be done. Very much believes in that. Will frown and disapprove of playing around in the office and be upset if you goof off or if you wear too much perfume. It's a female worker. They don't like these things. They're not, they don't like showy people. They don't like loud people. They don't like people goofing off. They're serious. Anything that disturbs that uh, atmosphere will upset them. Will demand courteous manners and perfect grammar and no complaining. He will spank you when you're bad, but will reward you when you're good. This is a serious boss. Capricorns, if they're on the top, if they're the boss, no fooling around. They're serious, they're good, they're kind, they will be sympathetic, but don't play around with them. They mean it seriously. Real quickly, let's go over the Midot. Does he have Gaava? He's not, he doesn't have a problem with arrogance. Anava, is he humble? He can be humble, not necessarily very humble. He's quiet, in other words, he's on the shy side. Busha, yes, that's, that's a form of shyness. He has that a little bit. Azut, is he aggressive? No, he's not the aggressive type. He actually lets people go before him. Ahava, he needs to develop a little bit more affection outwardly, not to give the impression that he's so serious and reserved. But he's not lacking inside. It's just on the outside, perhaps, he has to be more demonstrative. Sina, does he hate? He doesn't really hate anybody. Actually, there's only one thing I could say that I could add at this point, that those who are lazy 
in goofing around, he actually will look down at. There are certain signs that if they see somebody who's exactly opposite of them, and it's something which is not good, like laziness, they will actually frown. But it's not real sinai, it's not hatred. Rahamim, compassion, they have some empathy. Yes, they do. Akhzaryut, they're not cruel. Unless they can be cruel, if, of course, they're not refined. Akhzaryut, cruelty is not a midah that belongs to any particular sign. But it can be developed just like stinginess could be, depending if there's fertile ground there. Because he's serious and gruff and frugal and denies himself certain pleasures, he may believe in denying it from others too. In other words, there can be sometimes cruelty. Simha, he needs to work a lot on becoming a happy per person, on having a positive outlook because he's pessimistic. He can be depressed. Daga worries, he has worries sometimes. Harata, does he regret? In other words, does, does, does he feel bad he did something? He can be frustrated, he can feel bad about something, but usually he's persistent and doesn't give up. Kaas, does he hold anger? He doesn't get angry often, but if, if he got angry, he will hold on to that, angry for a long, for that anger for a long time. But he doesn't get angry often. Ratzon, can you appease him? Not always. He has to learn to be appeased and to be forgiving, even, even those that upset him. He's very stubborn, remember, so it's a little harder to appease him. Kina, is he jealous? No. No problem whatsoever. Zerizut, is he diligent? He can be very diligent because he's ambitious. Zehirut, is he cautious? He has enough caution. Aslut, is he lazy? No. He looks down at those who are lazy. Nadibut, is he generous? He's not over generous. Because remember, he denies himself certain things, he's frugal, but he's not, he's not necessarily tzaykanut, he doesn't really have that much stinginess, unless that frugality goes overboard, then he can become stingy. But usually Capricorn is not stingy, he's economical. Zechira, does he remember? Yes, he has a good memory, usually, no problem. He remembers his debts, he's responsible, he pays on time. That's very good to know. Shikha, does he forget? Well, it depends. If you did something against him, he may not forget. So he may have to learn a little bit to be forgetfulness, to be forgetful. But he does not forget his debts. He does not forget a kindness. If somebody lent him money, he's going to return it as soon as possible. He doesn't want to owe people money. Shatika, is he silent? Yes, too much Shatika. He's always quiet. Sheke, does he lie? No, he's an honest individual. He's dependable. He can trust in him. He doesn't lie. You can actually trust him much more than many other signs. Emet, is he truthful? Yes, you can confide in him. He, will, he won't reveal your secrets. Hanifud, will he flatter you? Bishum panim va'ofen, no, no way will he flatter you. But he will not be, he will, but he's more tactful than the, than the Sagittarius or the Scorpio. In other words, he won't tell you in your face what he thinks of you. He's more shy, he's more respectful, he's not blunt. But he won't flatter either. Lashonara? No, he doesn't gossip. He doesn't meddle in other people's affairs. Teshuvah? Can he do Teshuvah? What, what is required to do Teshuvah? To change your ways? He's a stubborn individual. It may be difficult for him to do Teshuvah, to amend his ways. But he's ambitious. He's, he's interested in doing the right thing. He's cautious. So he has some good qualities that will help him do Teshuvah once he's made up his mind. Torah? He's steady, he's constant, he's persistent. He has the, the atmada, he has what, ta, what, is, what is necessary for him to be uh, wanting to learn Torah. He's studious, he, he, he likes these kind of things. He shouldn't have a problem with learning Torah. Yirat Shamaim, he believes in authority, right? He doesn't rebel against authority. He's very much for tradition. So Yirat Shamaim is, should not be a problem. Savranut is he patient, very patient, so that's not a problem. Tavot, does he have vices? Does he have desires? No. He doesn't care so much about the pleasures of life. He just wants to be secured. Kavod, does he pursue kavod? He, of course, enjoys being at the top, but he's not demanding. He demands obedience. Obedience is not kavod. Right? Kavod means you want to be honored. You want to, you want to prestige. He doesn't have a problem so much with that, even though he wants to be on top because he believes he can do a better job. He's a definitely a good leader. 
but he's not looking for it and will push himself to get it. Nekama, does he take revenge? No, he doesn't take revenge. But he's very much into planning and strategy. And slowly but surely, he will get to the top. But he will not step on other people. Dikaon, yes. Dikaon, unfortunately, for Capricorn, is one of his weaknesses, depression. He has to work on it. He has to get out of that. He has to develop a more optimistic attitude towards life. And finally, let's salute. Does he look down at people? Does he ridicule them? Does he make fun of them? No. Even though he may feel bad for people, in other words, if somebody is clumsy, if somebody does, is lazy, he may actually feel bad. And he may actually disapprove of certain kinds of behavior, but he will not look down on people. He will not make fun of them. In order to be a late son, in order to be a mocker, a clown, you have to have a certain personality. You have to have a certain, you have to be an extrovert. You have to like to talk. You have to like to show yourself in, in public. There's a certain ingredients that make a late son. And they're not found in Capricorn. As I've pointed out in the past, every sign has strengths and every sign has weaknesses. Part of what we're trying to do here in this shiur of astrology is to point out those weaknesses and strengths for us to get to know ourselves better, for us to get to know our spouses and our friends better, so that we should be able to work on the midot, to judge everybody favorably, that when we see something that we don't misunderstand what it is, that that's his nature. And guess what? A nature cannot be changed. I want you to remember this very, very important point. One's nature cannot be changed. You are what you are. However, you can control it. You can rein it, rein it in. You can definitely uh, subdue your desires. But all of this can only be done with proper training. This proper training can only come about if one learns Torah. And after one has learned Torah, one has to make the next... Uh, the, the, the next following step, which is the more difficult step, and that is to making the decision that, yes, not that he wants to change completely by eradicating a particular midah, but that he wants to control himself. Controlling oneself is not easy, but it can be done. Rabbis tell us that none of us in this world are faced with a challenge that we cannot handle. Everyone who was born with a certain inclination, with a certain tendency, with a certain weakness, has been given the tools to be able to cope with it. Has been given the intelligence, hopefully if he's a healthy person, to be able to deal with it. The problem is we don't always have the right direction. We don't always have the right priorities. There are certain things that should be priority. A solid friendship, a solid marriage, that should be a priority. And in order to achieve that, you have to be a good person. You can't be a selfish person if you're going to be selfish. You're not going to be a good friend. You're not going to be a good husband or a good father, a, a, good, a good mother. There are certain things that are no-nos. Right? There are certain things here that are beautiful to have. I mean, if somebody is persistent, that's great. You don't have to be persistent to be a good husband, a good father, right? But there are certain midot that are in extreme importance that every sign has to, of course, adapt. And hopefully, Bezat Hashem, the more we learn about this, the more we see how this is important. And Bezat Hashem, we will take whatever necessary action is to develop the midot, to refine our character, and to Bezat Hashem be better people. Thank you very much.